Hello, my name is Curtis Michael. I'm from the Sibiganegadi First Nation here in um, beautiful Nova Scotia. And what's the program that you're running? Initials are MHRRA. And I think it's, I um, have trouble with this one. The Mi'kmaq Heritage uh, Research and Restoration Association. My role there is mainly to teach the Mi'kmaq language, the Smith Francis Reading and Writing. But I also work for um, MK, which is the Mi'kmaq Ganam Madanaway, the Mi'kmaq Education as a teacher for approximately 20 years at the high, at the school here on the, on the reserve. Well basically what I do is I make uh, short videos on, online and I record them and we put them onto a secret secret site, members only. Uh, it's language and conversational so the, the participants they watch the videos like I said they're only 10 minutes long because there's quite a lot of information and I don't want to bore the students, really. So they'll, they'll repeat my words and my lessons and send them so I can approve of them and after I watch them. Basically, that's it. It's pretty, pretty interesting. What are the age groups of your students? Um, I would say from teenagers to probably 70. From, yeah, about 15 years old, maybe to 70. And what impact do you see on the students after they take the program? You know what? I, when I see, see them in person, like at a conference or at a meeting or a uh, gathering, I, I notice they're doing, using a lot more Mi'kmaq than when I first, first met them. They're more confident because, um, I don't know, we, always, we build each other up, right? That, that's, that's basically it. I hear a lot more Mi'kmaq being spoken when I go to certain areas of uh, Eastern Canada now. Okay. Do you find like an emotional impact on them? You know what? A lot of pride. I see a lot of people with their pride. Like the gentleman you just was just here, big time. He's proud of his heritage and his culture and his language. And I see that in, uh, even the young people, right up, adults, everybody. You see a lot of their, um, I don't know, cultural pride through language. What is it about what you're doing that is really effective, do you think? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Um, you know what? When I worked with kids in the school system, I, that was, uh, I found it very effective because for the first time in my life I've heard Mi'kmaq being spoken here on, at, in the education uh, facility. You know, we were the home of the residential school. We had the Indian Day School. But now at our school down the road there, the LSK, K-12 school, you, you're hearing it in the playgrounds, in the hallways, in the cafeteria, in the classrooms. It's a real good feeling. What, this is a huge question, but what to you is Indigenous education? What's that? What is Indigenous education? Indigenous education, to me, it's, um, it's nothing you're going to find from a book. <laughs> it, would be, it would be the teachings of our ancestors, our grandfathers, our uncles. Stuff like living the, the reserved life and the culture, like, especially like my family, we're basket makers. So to me, uh, watching them and listening to them, and remembering what their ways, that, that's indigenous education to me. It's, 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 um, it's more hands-on. Like I, I, when I teach, I try to teach the way I want to be taught, uh, not from a book like, or like a recipe. Like, for instance, here's, here's an example. My grandmother would make loose skin again. For, and she didn't write it down on paper and say, here you guys go. And she told us, sit down, watch me. And we had to, you know copy her really. That, that's indigenous education to me anyways. <laughs> what do you hope to uh, see in the next 10 years for indigenous education? Uh, more control. More control by indigenous people, First Nations people. And a lot more um, uh, land-based teachings too. Like We're starting to do that around here. When, when growing up, land-based to me was going to the wildlife park once a year. That was our field trip. Now they're taking kids out and they're Making canoes, baskets, knives, what spears, fishing, eeling, hunting, and I'm proud of that. But I like to see that increasing within the next ten years. Same with our, our 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 language courses. What advice would you have for anyone else who wants to teach a language program? For anyone who wants to teach it or take it. Teach. Teach it. Leave the books out of the classroom. I did a lot of uh, TPR, total physical response, when I teach. A lot of visual. Basically, I act like an idiot in front of class, and the kids would copy me and mimic me, and then we would start talking without the books. Also, record every elder, because we, have, we only have a few Mi'kmaq speakers in this community, and 
their elders, right? I'm, I'm not fluent. Like, I, when I get stuck, I go see my elder down the road or call her up. And she's always right there. But I'm, I'm also, I was wishing we could record her, her stories and stuff like that in Mi'kmaq. But I guess if you're going to start, if you want to teach it, do it effectively, Mi'kmaq way.